dear participants we will be starting the program in few minutes thank you for your participation and logging in so we will be starting the program in short while thank you all Yeah, perfect. I'm looking at all the data. Hmm. Headphone last time I put the earlier I just recorded my. Sir, all are coming. Sir, yes, sir, what thing? Yeah, apni la lagi. Umbe so na na what? Kya gonta ja? ஜாயின் பண்றேன் இருக்காரு சரி 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 வா ரவி வந்தாரு போல இருக்கு ஆ ரவி குமார் சார் வந்தாரு
நிறைய <laughs> <laughs> அதுவும் நம்ம அந்த ரோட்ரி இது வந்து உண்மையில நல்ல எக்ஸ்பீரியன்ஸ் ரிஹர்சல் பார்த்ததெல்லாம் I think uh, HOD has joined. Sir, unmute. Panikonga. Sir, unmute yourself. No, no, no. I am already. Uh, I think Two I have unmuted uh, Chief Guest also. Okay. Janardhanan, sir. Ah, uh, Janardhanan, sir. Sir, uh, good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon, sir. No, no, I was actually trying your number, I forgot. Oh, okay, sir. <laughs> I thought of calling you, but... Okay, I, I joined at, at 210 itself. I okay, have un- I think that the Jewish Brand is okay, seeing for the first time now. Uh, yes, yes, sir, admin? sir. Admin is somebody else, no? No, no, myself only, sir. Myself only. Okay, okay. So you didn't see me earlier. Work, sir. Okay. No, sir, just now I'm seeing, sir. All right. That is why no. I joined it. I was trying. It was uh, muted oh, okay, by okay. you. Uh, okay, I couldn't sir, call okay. you. Right. Just now I made you co-host, sir. Okay, okay. okay. Right. Sir, start, we'll start in exactly at 2.30, sir. No problem. Okay, sir. So, dear participants, we'll be starting the program exactly at 2.30 p.m. Thank you. Sir, welcome, sir. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Abhijit, sir. Welcome, sir. Good afternoon, ma'am. Hey, Rajan, what is the actual uh, sequence of events? Sir, tell me, sir. What is the se- sequence of events? Now, how are you? Now, first, uh, <coughs> first inauguration is uh, finished, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Now, we have a talk to Dr. Abhichit. No, how are you talking about the inauguration? How are you talking about the sequence? சிவச்சந்திரன் <laughs> all the best best thank wishes you, do thank well thank you ma'am thank you ma'am god bless you okay thank you ma'am good afternoon yana tanam sir good afternoon ma'am <laughs> how are you ah oh, fine sir they enjoy
சார் தியாகராஜ் சார் ஸ்டார்ட் பண்ணலாமா ஸ்டார்ட் பண்ணலாம் சார் ஓகே வெரி வார்ம் குட் ஆஃப்டர்நூன் டு எவ்ரி ஒன் வி ஸ்டார்ட் த ப்ரோக்ராம் வித் காலேஜ் ப்ரேயர் சார் ராஜகோபால் சார் வணக்கம் நமஸ்கார் at the lotus feet of holy trinity with the blessings and guidance of secretary maharaj swami sukadevananda ji we are to start our webinar a national webinar on scope employment opportunities and uh, employment opportunities and future research in applied zoology so good afternoon to one and all present here we the department of zoology ramakrishna mission vivekananda college cordially invite you to the national webinar lecture series on scope employment opportunities and future research in applied zoology let me take this opportunity to highlight a few elements that shape the webinar to be more constructive for the benefit of students commonly across the globe so as in tamil literature one of the important epics is mani megale it talks about not only disaster management but as well as cultivates the nature of humanitarianism among every individual in this context the current covid crisis has given us opportunities to build new strength and new avenues of performance to a larger extent in virtual mode the department of zoology has envisioned the new avenues of employment opportunities in applied zoology that emerge at the at the current moment and we like to share such important knowledge through renowned experts in the field of applied zoology in terms of scope employment opportunities and future research to you across the nation this webinar lecture series will provide a platform to the participants to learn and explore in the field of applied zoology thank you now i invite dr tyagarajan raman assistant professor and head department of zoology ramakrishna mission vivekananda college to deliver the welcome address and introduce the chief guest to the august gathering good afternoon to all uh, myself dr tyagarajan raman on behalf of the management principal and staff members of ramakrishna mission vivekananda college would like to extend a warm welcome to all the participants uh, for the national level webinar lecture series on scope employment opportunities and future research uh, in applied zoology uh, i extend my sincere welcome to all the four speakers for the webinar series who have uh, given us their concern and their precious time to share with us as well as all our students the scope and research opportunities in zoology 
dear sirs i welcome all of you for this webinar series today's chief guest for the day is dr s janardhanan who is professor and head department of zoology university of madras i have known janardhanan sir since my msc days from loyola college when he was working as a scientist in entomology research institute and uh, we had discussed a couple of times there and subsequently uh, when i moved over to university of madras for my phd i have known sir for quite long time since then dr s janardhanan finished his phd from uh, uh, bharathidasan university and then he did his post doctoral fellowship from united states of america and subsequently he moved over to madurai uh, tyagaraja college in madurai and then he joined university of madras as uh, associate professor now he has taken he is in charge of the department of zoology for the last 6 uh, years and he has published a number of research papers on insect protein and uh, he has guided a number of phd students also dear sir i welcome you to inaugurate this uh, webinar series and thank you. Uh, thank you sir and i hope that um, uh, your experience will be a big boost for us in our endeavor welcome sir thank you now i request you to kindly give uh, the inaugural address thank you uh, dr tagarajan for uh, thank you sir kindly consented to me the chief guest of uh, this uh, uh, webinar actually on uh, lecture series arranged by the department of zoology vivekananda uh, college thank you very much once again and i also extend my thanks to dr shivachandran as well as the principal who has kindly consented to me as the chief guest for the inaugural function and it is the right time especially for the zoology students a very apt title is given as a lecture series scope employment opportunities and future research in applied biology applied zoology uh, where of course uh, i will be discussing uh, with you all um, especially on two major areas one is what is the scope that you have for research after you do your post graduation of course post graduate study is very important to anyone to pursue research in any discipline and i will be discussing what is the scope which is available or opportunities which is available for one to undergo research as career and on the other side i will be discussing with the teaching opportunities as well as what are all the other employment opportunities available now uh, with uh, several different uh, public and private sector uh, undertakings in uh, india as well as with other uh, avenues for zoology students to get themselves uh, a, a career in their uh, life so with this i just would like to highlight some aspects of uh, research opportunities for zoology students first and foremost when you pursue your msc you complete your msc when people join for msc program or pg program with the university department i always advise them to train themselves during the course of the study in the two years study primarily based on the syllabi provided by ugc csir so once they they come across the difficulties of the subjects in the life sciences and the ugc csir they will be very well no uh, compete themselves to attend for the national eligibility test for ugc csir there are uh, at least 1000 fellowships are given both by csir and ugc as a junior research fellow and those who have qualified in this ugc csir net examinations they will also be qualified for lecturership and the amount of fellowship and this kind of fellowship is for 5 years and you all know that the amount of fellowship including hra will be around 40000 rupees per month so that would be more than sufficient for a research student to sustain themselves to sustain themselves as well as to to some extent sustain their family also 
so it is my humble request to all you students who are having an aptitude for research we will try ugc csr and secondly there are of course several research fellowships which are given by ugc to all university departments in the departments which are uh, getting some kind of uh, special assistance program we call it as a sap program and people who get sap programs in university department at least 5 to 10 number of fellowships are given by ugc every year so this is another boost for students who do research in university departments and of course you have a lot of uh, sponsored research projects in which you can also get yourself uh, appointed as a project fellow or junior research fellowship or sometimes a senior research fellowship that will definitely help you also to earn some money as well as do your research other than the area in which you sometimes work in the project or with the concern of the principal investigator you can also do the same project for your phd program so that again varies so there are a lot of sponsored research projects and for the ssc students privileged students then there is a fellowship from ugc which is called as rajiv gandhi national fellowship and there are of course fellowships instituted by the department of science and technology through what is called as an inspire fellowship and this fellowship is directly given to students who come as a first rank holder in university examination so your your candidate who has come as a university rank holder will 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 be definitely given without any 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 other merit except the uh, rank certificate so that that is again another uh, very fascinating uh, uh, idea Uh, proposed by the mhrd where in which dst is instituted such kind of uh, fellowship programs and uh, you have also the fellowships given by many uh, foreign funding agencies through uh, some nodal uh, agencies in india uh, to cite a few uh, there is a mary mary curie fellowship for primarily you do a research on cancer and uh, there are also fellowship which are instituted again in ugc for uh, muslim students minority students which is otherwise called the maulana azad national fellowship uh, national fellowship and uh, in addition to that very recently in the last 4 5 years there is uh, also a research fellowship which is been which is actually instituted in the name of prime minister so prime minister research fellowships are available which is primarily given to students who join for research program in premier institutions in india like iit icer iic etc so once you complete your post graduate program there are opportunities for you to attend the uh, a kind of an entrance examination to get yourself uh, fit into a phd program in, in premier institution like iit iic once you join there are a lot of avenues for you to get this kind of prime minister research fellowship and if you see the support the extent of support which is given through this prime minister prime minister research fellowship is about 6.1 lakh per annum then you can imagine so there are about 100 fellowships per year is given now uh, for this uh, prime minister research fellowships so you have a lot of opportunities once you do your phd programs for doing research so biology students especially zoology students they will have a lot of scope so this is one part of course the scope which is available for future research of course it is it may be an applied applied zoological research or maybe a basic zoological research but when you have some aptitude for research you have a lot of avenues i am not going to discuss anything about the areas supplied areas in which of course you have to pursue in future that, that, that is of course secondary uh, i always consider you know you should have real research aptitude so that alone will be sufficient for you to get lot of opportunities in research okay and if you see on the other side and uh, other employment avenues uh, for both undergraduate as well as post graduate zoology students uh, you can very well do bed subsequently of course mbed if you wish and you will have ample number of opportunities both in the state as well as the central governments for teaching schools up to the higher secondary level so what if you have a kind of Uh, a teaching aptitude again some students they will be very good in teaching 
So those students, I always advise you, better you select whether you are going to be a, a teacher in a school or going to be a professor in a university or college system. So we at MIT will definitely will give you based on your, of course, the societal background, family background, you can do BA and also pursue MIT and you can very well be placed as a teachers in schools of both the state and the central governments. And as I already told you, if you have qualified for net national eligibility test for lectureship, you have also opportunities to serve as assistant professors in colleges as well as universities, even without PhDs. And they give some grace time for about three years time once you join, then you can pursue your PhD program. So these are all other avenues, especially available for teaching to the students who are actually interested in teaching. So these are the two major areas by which one can always see a lot of opportunities. And again, there are other opportunities like you know, employment opportunities like UPSC and the Staff Selection Commission, I'm not Public Service Commission, Group One Services especially. I will say always you attempt for the higher level of positions in these recruitment boards. So Group One Services, you have a lot of opportunities for IAS, Indian Administrative Service, Indian Foreign Service, Indian Postal Service, and especially for biology students and zoology students, there is a, 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 a higher level officer uh, examination through UPSC, which is an Indian Forest Service. Indian Forest Service is exclusively for uh, the biology students. One can always have an attempt, to, even after your undergraduate program, you can very well uh, write the uh, Indian Forest Service. So this is in the other side, the government employment at a higher level, at an officer level. And thirdly, you have a lot of opportunities uh, in the case of public sector as well as private sectors. And in, in both the sectors, of course, uh, in the name of what is called as a, a conservation biologist, behavioral biologist, wildlife biologist, zoo curator, director, wildlife warden, wildlife educator or manager, zoologist, fish and game warden, ecologist, environmental biologist, animal nutritionist, marine biologist, environmental consultants. So there are plenty of opportunities, both in the private as well as the public sectors, where there are a lot of zoological parks, museums, national museums, regional museums, there are national parks, and there are wildlife career opportunities. So these are all a lot of avenues, see, both at the government side as well as at the non-governmental side. And other than that, uh, India has uh, instituted uh, long back uh, institutes like uh, CSAR, Council of Scientific and Industrial Research, ICAR, Indian Council for Agriculture Research, Indian Council for Medical Research, DBT, DST, and the Zoological Survey of India. So these are all the various uh, public funded organization instituted by various national agencies and the government of India. You have a lot of opportunities from a lower grade as a research scientist to a level of uh, uh, research, sorry, research assistant to the level of research scientist, you have plenty of opportunities, of course. So these are all the agencies you can always look for. And if you have some special skills, you know, like uh, a scientific writer or a media sector, if you are interested in taking some documentation, both on the videography as well as for the writing documentation, and uh, there, are, there are many animal-based journals. And there are many journals where you have a lot of opportunities to employ yourself in those uh, journals where they will be primarily utilized to you for uh, writing articles for animal magazines, daily newspapers, as some kind of editorial assistants. And you can also do your own blogs for commercial websites. And you can also do some content creators for many conferences in biological sciences. Also, the kind of uh, TV programs would have listened to the Discovery Channel, National Geographic Channel, Animal Planet Channels, you know, without the background of the people who employed in those channels and the animal science background, it would be very difficult for them to survive. So these are all other, some uh, special skills if you provide, you can yourself create employment opportunities. And uh, apart from that, 
um, there are again um, opportunities like you know you can serve as a technicians in laboratories many national laboratories many biological laboratories and many environmental science laboratories many clinical laboratories that is medical laboratories you can employ yourself as technicians and there are forensic science and toxicology departments which primarily uh, look for some special people to do a kind of research as well as for doing some uh, kind of um, other uh, related areas work so you will have a lot of chance and there are some industries like a food science and nutrition industries and you have pharmaceutical industries so these are all the areas one can always look for and this is about uh, the various avenues i told you on both the private as well as the public sector undertakings in in india and uh, thirdly what i say is uh, for zoology students uh, they ha they have a better opportunity than what i feel is than the physical sciences and chemical sciences and they have several self employment opportunities especially in sericulture areas like sericulture where you have a separate ministry in india uh, it is the ministry of commerce and textiles they look after and there is a separate uh, um, you know board which is established national sericulture board which is at uh, bangalore and there are many research centers and its headquarters is at uh, mysore csr and ti and there are many other uh, substations throughout the country you can get yourself uh, trained in those uh, areas so you, you can also become an entrepreneur if you have even your 50 cents of an acre that would be sufficient for you to make yourself self employed through sericultural activities where you can always do horticulture as well as silkworm rearing and apiculture is another uh, area uh, which will of course in addition to to the primary employment this will give you lot of other uh, opportunities for you to earn more and uh, we are very well known about uh, we have a very large you know coastal regions aquaculture mariculture or again uh, lot of avenues of course there are some avenues are available with reference to lactoculture in some of the restricted areas or regions of our country vermiculture is a, a, a very emerging area we now talk about organic farming and all vermiculture is definitely going to be an important uh, area in uh, organic farming and uh, addition to that the uh, poultry farming in which we all you know well versed uh, nowadays uh, you have a uh, fish farming very recently there are uh, some fishes which are been grown uh, like you know aquarium uh, fish maintenance so these are all various other areas by which one can always be self employed on their own the zoology students they have lot of these kind of self employment opportunities so this is what i just i would like to uh, with this uh, uh, lecture series uh, i would like to highlight these areas research as well as other uh, avenues are uh, more for zoology students than any other students and i think in the deliberations what you are going to actually hear today with reference to primarily from uh, dr tyagarajan i came to know that uh, there are experts which are who are going to talk more on applied zoology how we can get you no know, self employed after their undergraduate or post graduate programs i think with this highlights or glimpses what i make on uh, the employment opportunities at the scope for the zoology students i congratulate the team at vivekananda college as well as dr tyagarajan for uh, kindly given me this opportunity to interact with you and i wish you all the very best and i am very happy to inaugurate this uh, webinar lecture series thank you very much thank you thank, thank you, you sir, sir. Uh, i think uh, yes, yes. that is uh, half done you have you have done our job uh, more easy sir giving enthralling such and voluminous information on the scope of zoology think the the app question for uh, to inaugurate this uh, session will be uh, we, we have we are very happy to be uh, we are happy to have you in our inauguration sir thank you so much sir thank you thank you thank you, thank you. can i can i can i leave now or yes sir, sir. Uh, yeah and i'll join after some time yes sir I'll yes sir thank you sir thank you sir
So now uh, we are moving on to the uh, invited speaker session. We have the first session by Abhijit Mitra. Sir, Abhijit Mitra, sir, are you there? Yes, yes. Yes, sir. Okay, sir. Okay. I'm very happy to introduce uh, Abhijit Mitra, sir. Dr. Abhijit Mitra, Associate Professor and former Head Department of Marine Science, University of Calcutta, India, has been, an, has been active in the sphere of oceanography since 1985. He obtained his PhD as Net Qualified Scholar in 1994 after securing gold medal in MSc Marine Sciences from, Marine, from University of Calcutta. Since then, he has joined Calcutta Port Trust and WWF in various capacities to carry out research programs on environmental science, biodiversity conservation, climate change, and carbon sequestration. Presently, Dr. Mitra is serving Techno India University, West Bengal, as the director of research. He has, to his credit, about 553 public scientific publications in various national and international journals and 42 books of postgraduate standards. Dr. Mitra is presently the member of several committees like PACON, International, IUCN, SIOS, etc., and has successfully completed about 19 projects on biodiversity loss in fishery sector, coastal pollution, alternative livelihood, climate change, and carbon sequestration. Dr. Mitra also visited as faculty member and invited speakers in several foreign university of Singapore, uh, foreign universities of Singapore, Kenya, Oman, and USA. In 2008, Dr. Mitra was invited as a visiting fellow at University of Massachusetts at Dartmouth, USA, to deliver a lecture series of lectures on climate change. Dr. Mitra also successfully guided 38 PhD students. Presently, his domain of expertise includes environmental science, mangrove ecology, sustainable aquaculture, alternative livelihood, climate change, and carbon sequestration. Thank you for the wonderful. Uh, uh, thank you, sir. Uh, the uh, bio data goes for a long list, and we have cut short with a uh, few. Uh, this, uh, here is a voluminous uh, bio data of sir, and here is a, here is an app, app person for this uh, first session on polyculture and seaweed formulation. Over to you, sir. Uh, thank you. Am I audible? Ah, yes, sir. Okay. Uh, then you have to yes, sir, enable yes, me to see yeah, yeah. the screen. Yes, sir. You are now host, sir. Co-host. Okay. You can share your screen. Okay. Uh, is it visible? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. So, uh, first of all, I would like to uh, give my heartful thanks to the organizer for giving me this chance. Uh, I must say that I am so grateful on behalf of all the participants from the state of West Bengal, Vanakkam, and my greetings to all of you. The first thing is that I am so happy to see that from our neighboring country, some participants of the Joint Secretary Rank and World Bank Consultant have also joined from Bangladesh. I have seen uh, Mr. Shama Prashad Bapari and Mr. Emin Sarkar, who are from the Bangladesh, our neighboring country. They are working extensively in Sundarbans, and I'm glad to see that they are also present over here to see our uh, lecture 
to see our so that we can have an interactive session between our neighboring countries and between both the countries because we have mangroves both in india as well as in bangladesh in bangladesh we have the bigger chunk of mangroves of 62 percent whereas in india we have 38 percent so i'm glad to get their views and to get their participation now i have divided my entire lecture into two parts first one is about the polyculture and the second one is the innovation in the fish feed preparation now if you see the statistics of the aquaculture production it is you see the capture production and the aquaculture production capture production means you have got a limitation if you see it with the orange uh, orange graph you will see that after that it has become stagnant because after capturing and capturing and capturing there will be over exploitation and then the graph becomes zero the slope becomes zero but if you try to increase the protein content you will see that the graph is increasing why you have to increase the protein content because today the planet earth is sustaining 7 billion population and in 2050 the prediction is there it will go it will exceed 9 billion population now how to get this extra protein definitely it is from the fish protein because because it is one of the most digestible and most easily accessible now if you see the nature nature is our best teacher if you see the nature there is no not only single species you see crabs are there you see so many diverse species are there so the nature promotes polyculture polyculture means poly means many and in nature there are so many species so polyculture is there in nature and it is the teaching of the nature then if you go to some mangrove spaces you will see the color of the water is green in color the why the water is green in color because of the presence of the phytopigments which are the chlorophyll pigments from the phytoplankton the base of the food chain and on these phytoplankton the zooplankton feed and on the zooplankton the fishes feed and therefore this is a concrete food chain spun in the estuarine and coastal areas india is having 4871 kilometer uh, total mangrove out of which west bengal sundarban is having 2120 about half of the mangroves i think you have heard of west bengal sundarbans and i will come in details on that now apart from the fish species you are also getting crabs crabs is also an important aquacultural species its cost is about 600 to 700 rupees per kg the skyla serata they are very important and you get a lot of crabs along with other fin fish and shellfish in the aquacultural practice now what is polyculture it is basically the culturing of more than one species of aquatic organism in the same pond and it is based on the concept of utilization of different trophic levels that means we don't want to lose any of the levels we want a greater production a greater production to sustain these billions of population this rising population so the every niche has to be utilized properly and that is the basic aim of polyculture now there are certain merits of polyculture maximum fish production is possible in intensive polyculture what is intensive polyculture suppose you have for per meter square you can stock x per meter square if you make it x square or x cube then there will be the scarcity of oxygen there will be the scarcity of natural food so in that case you have to go for aerator you have to give oxygen through special mechanical method you have to provide extra feed and that is polyculture to get the maximum production that is intensive method there are also semi intensive method but nowadays intensive method is used through various technologies we are adopting and even the laser is adopted to kill the virus to kill the bacteria and the spores you are getting more profit from the fish farming it creates many employment opportunities 
and intensive polyculture is fully controlled by the farmer more fish can be cultivated and produced from a very short place because you are utilizing every sectors every trophic levels now there are certain demerits the probability of the disease is very high sometimes it is not possible to get a big size fish and there are also chances of disease in the polyculture system now compatibility of species is very important which species are to be cultivated i give you a very small example see today among the participant list i was just uh, i was just going through this participant list i found one of the participant navonita pal she is doing a research on mangrove seedlings but the thing is that she is not compatible with other researchers so when she goes to the field there is certain sort of disturbance there is certain sort of quarreling there is certain sort of heat and all these things so in that case i being a guide do not get the maximum production i send the scholars with some motive but if there is some disturbance if there is no compatibility i do not get the maximum production in that case if i send ovirup mitra or prasenjit pramanik they are very compatible they don't they may not avirup may not be a phd scholar he is a, his background is basically commerce and chartered accountancy but with his passion when he goes to the field when he drives into the subject when he goes into the aquarium uh, manufacturing and other aquarium culture method prasenjit pramanik they are compatible so compatibility and synchronization is the basic backbone of any production of any business that is very important i'm just joking i am not telling that navnita pal is not always compatible sometimes she is also compatible but the thing is that this is the basic backbone if you culture for example you have heard i don't know whether you have heard of uh, vetki that is a carnivorous fish if you culture vetki with prawn what happens the vetki is being a carnivorous will attack all the prawns and you know the, in prawns what happens after a certain period of time they go for the molting molting is just like the changing of the dress when you become fat you have to take a new shirt you cannot use the old shirt every time you have to use a new trouser so the molting is the process when the prawn goes the exoskeleton the chitinous exoskeleton they start changing and a new exoskeleton is formed but during this phase the uh, the muscles of the prawn are very delicate and they are very very lucrative item for this vetki and other fishes so i have to see that who are very compatible and therefore the compatibility of synchronization is the basic backbone now first thing what you have to do if you go for the polyculture you have to control the harmful aquatic plants and animals because sometimes they are very toxic then you have to eradicate you have to destroy the cannibalistic and unwanted fish for example i have told about the betki then you have to put the lime to maintain the ph because sometimes the ph goes down of the water about 6 to to 7 you have to make it 8 then you have to apply fertilizer npk why because this fertilizer actually promotes the bloom of the phytoplankton and then the food chain starts i have told you the phyto based uh, polyculture phyto based fish culture so the phytoplankton has to be promoted and this can be promoted by applying fertilizer then you have to go for the stocking stocking may be of two main types semi intensive variety and the intensive variety but for the intensive variety you require a very high tech method you have to use laser light you have for destroying the bacteria you have to use the aerators you have to use the artificial feed which are rich in antioxidants and promote the growth so these are very important so on this if you have the availability of these things then you go either for the semi intensive stocking or for the intensive stocking this is our case study zone i have told the sundarbans sundarban is an area which is having a mangrove area of 9630 square kilometer 900 9630 square kilometer at the apex of the bay of bengal in the lower gangetic delta supporting 34 mangrove species and if you see this sundarban is a very very cyclone prone zone 
on 20th may of this month of this of this year there was a severe cyclone known as ampan i don't know whether you have all heard of it but all the fisheries were destroyed many fishes were killed and today also west bengal is suffering for a very economic loss and this is a high cyclone prone zone because which originates from the bay of bengal these mangroves act as the line of defense and moreover why i am telling of the mangroves because the mangroves litter i mean the decomposed parts of the mangroves when they fall on the estuaries on the coastal waters they degrade and breaks into nitrogen and phosphorus which are the natural fertilizer and they promote the phytoplankton growth so mangroves are important in two ways firstly they prevent the cyclonic depressions they prevent the natural disasters they prevent the vulnerability and at the same time they promote the fertilization of the aquatic phase and help in the growth of the fish production this is sundarbans the only place in the entire planet where you get the mangroves and the tigers in a very very compatible way panthera tigris tigris the royal bengal tiger nowhere in the planet you get such type of compatibility such type of com uh, uh, combinations and we after the zoological survey of india they made a scat analysis they found that the tiger also consumes the crab so this is a unique ecosystem where you get about more than 300 species of fishes and you get the tiger you get the crabs you get the mangroves so these are the teachings of the nature everything has to be compatible everything has to be synchronized this is the sundarbans and this is a map of the sundarbans where you know there are seven estuaries all are coming and meeting the bay of bengal so this is just a features now these are the compatible fish the first one we call we call in lo local language parshe which is scientifically known as lisa parshia and the other is the freshwater prawn macrobrachium rosenbarki so these are very compatible species why they are compatible because the lisa parshia they often consume from the kalum the various zooplankton and the phytoplankton and this macrobrachium rosenbarki they are the bottom feeders so the excreta of this lisa they are consumed by them otherwise if they would not have been consumed then the excreta which is rich in ammonia they could toxic make the water toxic and cause several types of diseases so this is the compatibility you have to know the biology we have to know the composition of the excretory product you have to know the food cycle of each species to start the business in the fishery sector you see i will come with this this is the picture of a prawn fed with entomorpha intestinalis which is a seaweed now when i'm speaking of the applied zoology i'm not restricted to zoology only today no none of the subjects have the barrier all the subjects have become interdisciplinary the barriers have dissolved as for example i have told avirup mitra who is sitting over there he is by profession uh, going for a chartered accountancy course but he maintains his own aquarium shop very beautiful collections he is uh, he is having uh, and he is having in, in the heart of the city of calcutta he maintains big shops over there so it's by passion it's not restriction it is not there is no restriction and it's not restricted to any subject that i have to study zoology if you have the passion you can grow fish it does not means that you have to become a zoologist so here is an interdisciplinary approach where the botanist can also fit very nicely because the food source is the entomorpha which is a seaweed now we have made a culture over there prawn and the lizard tadi what i have told and we have found that after the cost benefit ratio because after the end of the day you have to see that what money you are getting per per hectare you are getting 1.1.57 uh, 1.58 if you go for the monoculture but if you go for the polyculture your income is increasing and also there are certain biological indicators i will teach you but in a very slow way for example if your fish is good how you can 
see how you can say that your fish is having a better growth. You know, the, you take the weight of the fish. You take the weight of the fish. I have shown you that this is the pan balance. This is the balance. It costs very less, about 800 to 1,000 uh, 1000 uh, rupees. And you take the weight, you take the length. Then you divide the weight with the cube of the length. It is the ratio of weight with the cube of the length. If it becomes nearer to three, that means it is having a very good growth. You see, if you see the value, we have made an equation. Here also, you see the mathematicians are coming into the forefront. This equation is having 2.95, and this is having 3.01. This is weight and length. We have transferred it into logarithm, an exponential logarithm model. And you see that the growth is almost isometric in case of prawn and also in case of lizard study. That means the compatibility is there. If the compatibility would not have been there, it would go down below 2.9 or 3 and could have touched about 1 or, uh, or 2 like that. That means your growth is not uniform. So you see, this is an interdisciplinary approach where the mathematics is coming, where the botanists are coming, where the zoologists are coming, and even you have to look upon the environment the environmental water quality. So the environmental scientists are also coming in the scenario. So there are chances of, uh, of employment of, from the all sectors in this, in this livelihood programs. Now, I am coming to the next phase of my lecture. The first phase is over, the merit and scope of polyculture, because I'm very systematic, so I'm doing this. Innovation in fish feed preparation. What are the innovation? How you are going to make the fish feed? If you want to make the fish feed, what you want, uh, if you want to make the fish feed, then you want, you know, a rice bran, then the dried fish, then the wheat bran, then something chillating agent, all these you mix up and put it in the pelletizer. It comes in the form of a pellet with a protein of 25 to 26% for the floating fish and something more for the sinking uh, types of feed. So this is the fish feed preparation method. But what happens, you know, when you are mixing the dried fish as an ingredient of the fish feed, sometimes it happens. The fish are, uh, fishes are not taking the feed at all due to some reasons or the other. They are not getting that appetite. So the fishes feed remains in the aquarium base or at the pond bottom. And what happens in that case, the ammonia generates, the water becomes toxic. We say that diseases are happening, but the diseases are happening because of the poor quality of the water. In that case, if you replace the dried fish uh, ingredients with the enteromorpha, with the plant-based protein, it is better. For example, soybean, it is having high protein. If you put the soybean, much more instead of the dried fish dust then it is good for the environment you see this is a, a very old times we have started this type of factory as an entrepreneur about 20 years back in a place called canning where we started this factory at that time the instruments were not sophisticated like this and this is the entomorpha intestinalis plenty of entomorpha intestinalis are available even in the aquaculture farm they are as at the waste products. They have got no value. The farmers do not know the idea that what huge amount of protein this seaweed is having. This seaweed is having about 13 to 17 percent protein. And therefore, we made a plan to dry this seaweed. Firstly, we sterilized it, dried it, and then we put it as a feed ingredients in the fish feed, and we then tried. You see. This, this is the seaweed reservoir in the West Bengal coast. If you go to a place called the Digha, you will see that lots of this entomorph are found in the nature with the gastropods, they are thriving over here. The mollusks are also there. So you see in the nature also, they are all in a compatible mode. There are botany, there are zoology. This, this is the embankment. And you will see this is some, some engineering construction over there. So, Every, what I'm trying to tell is that the subject has become multidisciplinary and interdisciplinary, and with a holistic approach, you have to approach this fishery sector. 
you see our scholars put ropes in a coastal area and after three months you see these ropes are carpeted and covered with huge amount of entomorpha so there is no scarcity of the raw materials we can go for the fish feed preparation and this is another innovative employment opportunity we can go for the fish feed preparation uh, with this dried entomorpha species with this dry seaweed this is usually these are the ingredients rice bran wheat bran fish meal shrimp meal then sunflower mustard oil cake garlic paste then entomorpha binders and the shark oil but if you replace this fish meal and shrimp meal why because i have told that they cause some toxicity in the aquatic phase and if you if you just replace it with the seaweed dust then it gives a very good results the environment is upgraded that is the main thing the water does not become toxic the water does not become poisonous the water becomes healthy and then only you have an isometric growth with a value of w by l cube w proportionate to cube of the length with a value of 3 or nearer to 3 now we have made a histological structure the students of zoology know that with a microtome section we have made the analysis of the muscles we have seen that you see whenever we have used entomorpha the growth has become very good you see the muscle fiber this bluish these whitish things in comparison where we have not used you see the muscle fiber they are very stiff and not very expanded but you see it has become expanded so this proves that plant-based proteins are more effective not only to upgrade the water but also in promoting the growth of the fish cultured species so we have made also, but if you start taking the entomorpha from the nature, it will not be a sustainable thing. It will, there will be an overexploitation. So we have made some entomorpha culture in some places in Sundarbans, where you have stocked the brackish water and put the thalas, and then they started growing luxuriantly. Now, there is another important thing. Today, a very important issue is the global warming. You know, in the globe, uh, previously there was a time when the atmospheric carbon dioxide was about 300 ppm, but now it has exceeded 410 ppm. If you see the internet now in the Google itself, you will see today it has crossed 415 ppm, 415 ppm. The permissible level is 350 ppm, 350. So this is global warming, which is causing all the imbalances on the planet Earth. The sea level is rising. The acidification is occurring. There is weather disruptions. Suddenly the rain is coming. Suddenly the rain is going. There is flood in Mumbai. There is flood in Assam. You see, there is huge uh, high temperature, where, which is not expected. So these are the weather abnormalities. All these are because of the climate change. And the culprit are the greenhouse gases. The excess carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. Uh, now why I am telling all these things? Because if you culture seaweed, this is a figure that how the carbon dioxide have increased over a period of time from 1984 to 2016, you see it has exceeded 400 ppm in Sundarbans only. In all the seasons, whether it is pre-monsoon, monsoon or post-monsoon. So this carbon dioxide is absorbed if you culture the seaweed because seaweed can absorb the carbon dioxide because you know these seaweeds they photosynthesize and for photosynthesis you know the basic raw materials are the carbon dioxide sunlight and water and this carbon dioxide is fixed in the seaweed with the help of an enzyme known as rubisco so the culture of the seaweed is not only helping to upgrade the aquatic phase it is also promoting the growth of the cultured fishes. At the same time, it is also upgrading the environment and reducing the greenhouse gases. With this few words, I am thanking to all of you. I am thanking to Ramakrishna Vivekananda College of Mylapur, Chennai, for giving me this opportunity. Thank you, all of you. Thank you.
thank you sir thank you so much abhijit sir shall we take some questions yes definitely definitely so participants who are wishing to have a question can raise their hand any questions clarifications any questions clarifications Mm -hmm. yeah. any questions from the participant side So I, I think there is no question. Yeah, it was very much clear. It seems. So the answer, sir. Ah. Ah. I think you can give the concluding remarks. Thank you, Dr. Abhijit, sir, for your uh, wonderful presentation. Uh, it was uh, one really a beautiful presentation on the Sundarban mangrove ecosystem. uh with lot of nice photographs of animal in fact one particular uh, picture that uh, caught my at uh, a uh, you know uh, interest was the prawn because that was my phd model also okay so it was really nice sir uh sir your first talk on mangrove ecosystem was very informative wherein you discuss about the scope of polyculture system as well as uh, animals that are used uh, in polyculture your second talk on feed formulation their composition and the economic importance and um, what was really interesting was the role of seaweed in coastal ecosystem regeneration and conservation it was uh, very uh, novel and it was really an eye opener for all of us uh, i am sure that not only the students of zoology but uh, students from other disciplines will also be interested in becoming entrepreneurs in aquaculture as well as polyculture ecosystem yes uh, i once again thank you sir for your wonderful presentation thank you sir thank you thank you very much thank you sir okay thank you sir is there is there is a question okay <laughs> uh, let me ask what is a msc students opportunity in this field uh firstly i would like to tell that they can be a self entrepreneurs number one number two msc in which field uh, who is asking the question msc in which field generally you, sir M an msc student msc in the biological field for example in zoology Maybe. botany so if they are interested there is an csir institute csm cri center for salt research institute at vabnagar gujarat they are doing on wonderful research on the seaweeds and also they have got a very good field station at tutikorin uh, where the lots of seaweeds are culture and they are used for various other purposes not only for the fish culture but seaweeds are used for making various food items and other things so there are lot of industrial applications even Yeah, I I don't have the presentations today. Even seaweeds are now used for making shampoo, shaving cream. So there are also opportunities to being absorbed in the pharmaceutical industries also, because many pharmaceutical companies are using seaweeds uh, for making the shaving cream, for making soap, for making shampoo, because they are having iodine. and good antioxidants so there are lot of scopes in various things and also in the pollution control board because seaweeds and other biological entities serves as the indicator species they can indicate the health of the environment particularly uh, when we are consuming the fish it should be monitored and checked that how much better and good for the health what is the level of accumulation 
what are the organs the gills the muscles the 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 bones inside which are more accumulating more in comparison to other so we must discard that and all these are taken care by the pollution control boards so they have set the permissible level and therefore there is chance to get involved not only in the research but also in government sectors like pollution control board state and central pollution control board and also in various other agencies like fisheries forest department etc thank you very much sir any other examples of polyculture uh yes uh if if you put carp means rohu katla and also the prawns it's a very good example because rohu katla one is the surface feeder other is the column feeder another is the prawn is the bottom feeder so it's a very good example where all the trophic levels are used uh, here uh, here is one participant dr pritam mukherjee and dr prashanjit pramanik they made an excellent study in west bengal and they have created a model of this of of combating of combating of a nice compatibility of these three species rohu lebio rohita carp katla katla and macrobrachium rosenbergi this is a very good example of polyculture in the freshwater system thank you so what is the overall cost of setup uh, uh the overall cost of setup depends on the dimension uh but per hectare the overall cost varies from 35000 uh, per hectare to about 1 lakhs depending on the semi intensive and intensive variety and you get the return within 6 to 8 months almost double sir what are the possibilities of ornamental fish aquaculture uh, ornamental fish aquaculture has the possibilities but now because of the covid lockdown phase it has come uh, very uh, down and uh, obhirup mitro what who i am telling about he is a specialist in that he uh, brings ornamental fish from uh, south asian countries uh, breed them and also sell them uh, so uh, if you just Uh, abhirup if you can unmute if you can uh, i will request the organizer to unmute abhirup mitra so that he can speak few words that what are the possibilities because he is doing a hands on training on that abhirup sir abhirup Ab mitra abhirup mitra ah yeah, ah, yeah. Uh, he can unmute himself sir okay abhirup you unmute so i am audible yeah 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 so basically what i do is uh, mainly i deal with exotic fishes but recently i have started an act for doing with native fishes so the if we can so the surprising fact is that uh, all over the world there is around 36000 types of fishes and the surprising fact which i have found out that corresponding to an exotic fish we have the same variety in india like suppose we have a kili fish which is available in the amazon river in brazil the same kili fish is available in the western ghats and we call that lampai fish but this indian fishes were never brought to the world but now recently the indian mane the the demand for that indian exotic indian native fishes to be kept in aquarium has gone up by a huge amount and the main indian market which uh, runs is with the chana species which is known as the snake heads so in bengal we have the bengal snake head which is known as the chana gachua it's a dwarf snake head and recently another snake head which was discovered in uh, west bengal jalpaiguri in the year 2018 is chana brunei or what we call it as chocolate snake head so i have kept a pair in my room so i have been researching on that hopefully it will breed in another month so if it's breed then it will be an achievement for me and the snake heads are snake heads and we have a lot of barbs in india too the western ghats it's full of fishes so not only for the eating purpose we can supply fishes but for ornamental purpose as well as keeping purpose like a hobby purpose indian we can also I mean, be a competition to the world oh okay. thank you thank you, thank you. so thank what you, i'm sir. what i was telling is that so you see his background is chartered accountancy but okay. you see his passion and he knows lot of about the other fishes the scientific names and others some things that the, the, the zoologists should be zealous of, of him so it's it's about the passion and he is an entrepreneur in west okay. bengal he is the entrepreneur at this age 
so this is something wonderful so there are a lot of uh, opportunities in the ornamental fish sector also okay sir okay, thank you thank sir thank, thank you. you so much so thank with you. this uh, we have come to the end of this session and okay. thank you so much for your wonderful uh, wonderful presentation and interaction sir thank okay. you so much okay 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 may i now uh, have the uh, opportunity to leave will you just yes, sir. thank you sir thank you sir thank, thank you sir. thank you thank you very much thank you so dear participants uh, as i have informed in the telegram group and the, uh, the whatsapp group so now we will have a live quiz now based on the information or the presentation given by dr abhijit mitra sir and uh, i'll uh, share my screen with the code for the game and i request uh, everyone to join in that hope all the participants have registered yourself into that mail into that uh, quizzes.com so this is the enter code and the you have to enter this code into your uh join uh, join game option so in that you have to enter this code 287606 and i have one participant abhirup mitra then 2 3 i want everyone to play this game because this will be taken in to for your attendance so we have uh, around 300 239 participants 38 participants so i want everyone to actively participate in this yes. among participants we have 237 participants and we have only 109 so far
so only 156 have joined what about the rest so we'll wait for a few more minutes சிவச்சந்திரன் then you have to give your date of birth then you have to join game then enter this code code so it'll take few steps i have already mentioned or I'll, i have already given this steps in the group also so it will some take some time but try to register and join the quiz joinmyquiz.com or quizzes.com either of the uh, uh, websites that is either of the topic you can uh, 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 put in uh, this is what to say in another uh, separate uh, browser 190 what about the other 40 so once it touches 200 will be starting the game that's good we have 202 so participants this is just an interaction a way that is interacting with the participants it's a form of quiz we'll be having few only five questions based on the talk which was given by the invited speaker so you need not worry about what is going to be or something which is going to be tough it will be very basic questions from what the invited speaker has given in his presentation so if you have observed the presentation then it will be more easy to answer it so we have 209 210 satyagran sir solanga sir சார் அதான் இப்போ இதில் வந்து இப்போது யூடியூப்லேயும் ஒரு ஹண்ட்ரட் இருக்காங்க ஸோ இது டூ ஃபார்ட்டியோட ஸ்டாப் பண்ணிக்கலாமா இல்லை வெயிட் பண்ணுவோமா இன்னும் என்டர் ஆகிட்டே இருக்காங்கல்ல அதான் அதான் ஆகிட்டே இருக்கு டூ டுவெண்ட்டி ஃபோர் வந்துருச்சு அதான் 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 இன்னும் ஃபியூ மினிட்ஸ் வெயிட் பண்ணலாம் சார் ஆ ஓகே சார் ஸோ இல் ஸ்டார்ட் பை டூ த்ரீ ஃபார்ட்டி ஃபைவ் யா டூ மினிட்ஸ் மோ the participants will be starting the quiz by 240 345 so try to enroll yourself we have few participants in youtube also i think it's done so we are starting the game Thank you. 
முடிச்சாங்களா சார் இன்னும் த்ரீ டுவெண்ட்டி டூ பிளேயர் சார் விளையாடிட்டு இருக்காங்க டூ சிக்ஸ்டின் ஓவர் ஓகே ரிமைனிங் ஒரு ஃபார்ட்டி இருக்கு so with this uh, we will be ending this game so here are the winners so uh, first deba smita r live game second and uh, third harish the others have secured 100 percentage but the timing was too long so they are behind the first three participants so thank you all for participating and we'll be having another quiz at the end of second session thank you thank you for the all the participants who have participated and congratulations to the top 3 winners thank you